a tranny. And that's your intro for tonight. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Approximate Podcast. This is uh, Ask a Tranny, our Friday questions and answer show. Uh, welcome. My name's Jamie French, and I'm solo tonight. Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? Uh, hey, uh, let's see. Let's really quick address the chat room. Uh, Smoke Hogan. Hey, this is a new name I'm not familiar with. Uh, says smoke up. Yes, absolutely. Smoke them if you got them. Uh, we do have, look, okay, so, uh, the past two weeks, we have not done one of these, two of these, I guess. <laughs> um, uh, it's just been really busy around here with all kinds of projects and, uh, working on all kinds of things for the show. Uh, so thanks for sticking around and showing up. Um, and, uh, we actually do have some email questions that we're going to get to, and we, of course, as per usual, will address your, uh, your questions in the chat room after we get done with the emails. So, let's just dive right into it. Uh, hold on, I see that John Don, good here in Iowa. Oh, hey, good, excellent, um, Glad that you're in the room. I really appreciate you checking out the show. Uh, hold on. I got to relight my cigarette. Give me just a second. Mm. Okay. So, uh, first question up. Uh, email that is sent by CoolBreeze063. Uh, <laughs> says, uh, Hi, Cookie Monster. Um, if... <laughs> If you're a fan of the show, you'll know what that means. Um, just look, if you don't know what we're talking about um, or what I'm talking about with the Cookie Monster line, uh, go through the archives. Just go a couple shows back and listen to the Approximate Podcast, the uh, pre-recorded episode. I think it's episode 20. Yeah, shit, it might be episode 30. It's 29 or 30, one of those. Um and find out what the term Cookie Monster means. Uh, anyway, uh, Cool Breeze says, Hi, Cookie Monster. Uh, uh, Mick here. Hope I don't fuck you up by using your name. Um, fascinating last episode with the Tales from the Pokey. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the episode we're talking about here. Uh, can't wait to hear more of those. Uh, it got me wondering, if you ever got to conduct your social experiment with the community service hours... Uh, with the community service hours completion or not, uh, how did the bureaucracy react? Okay, so uh, a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, um, on an episode of The Void, my little kind of 15-minute kind of journal entry rant, um, I spoke about uh, uh, my probation. Uh, I'm, I have about uh, 14 months worth of probation, and at this point, I've completed about the what four or maybe five of those months. So I got about nine or ten months left to go, give or take. Uh, anyway, I, I ran into a problem, and uh, I spent uh, an entire episode of the void uh, bitching and moaning about it. And, um, you'll just, I don't want to go over it again. You'll just have to go back and listen to that episode of The Void. Uh, by all means, please do that. Uh, but he's asking, I, in the episode, I said I was going to conduct a social experiment, uh, due to the problems I was having with my probation officer, or more succinctly, um, uh, her supervisor, uh, and to answer your question, Cool Breeze, uh, yeah, and it, it fizzled out. It totally fucking fizzled out, which is why I didn't even fucking uh, address it with another episode of The Void to describe what happened because it turned out to be nothing. It turned out to be nothing. I showed up the next month, um, and I had not completed any hours of my community service, and absolutely zero happened. 
Uh, so there was no story to tell. There was nothing interesting to, to, to relate to an audience. So, yeah, I mean, I uh, hope that answers your question. Nothing. The big fucking goose egg. Um, but uh, as the months pass, I'm sure we'll run into more problems. Murphy's Law. Uh, so, I mean, you know, stick around and keep listening to episodes of The Void, or if the problem's big enough, we'll turn it into an actual, you know, uh, flagship show, a proper Monday show, nice hour-long venture. Uh, until that happens, yeah, nothing, nothing, I'm fine, I'm here doing a show, I, I, I was not jailed, I was not, it, it turned out fine. Um, uh, so, second question from Cool Breeze, uh, Cool Breeze asks, uh, any more details for the Apoxapalooza, when is it to be held, or already held, uh, if upcoming, is it going to be in an online event or in an actual physical location? Okay, so here's the thing with the Apoxapalooza. Just a couple days ago, as of the time of this very recording, uh, we had our one-year anniversary, and we did our last show of a complete year. Um, so on Monday... As of this date, uh, we're going to open up the new year of the Approximate Podcast with something that we've been teasing for a few months now, and that's uh, an event called the Approximapalooza, and it's a concert. It's a music concert. Uh, well, <laughs> what else kind of? What other kind of fucking concert would it be? Jesus, you're an idiot, Jamie. Um, yeah, it's a music show, uh, and it's going to be uh, me. Uh, Orion, my my regular co-host, um, and also the drummer in our band. Uh, him and I have a little duo uh, called This Island Earth. Uh, it's uh, also going to feature uh, a really good friend of the show and a personal hero of mine, a guy by the name of uh, Cornmo uh, from the band uh, 357 Lover out of New York. Uh, an amazing band and an amazing talent, and he's going to be on the Approxapalooza. And we're all going to do three songs each, and we're going to kind of rotate them one at a time. Um, and it's going to be a nice, tight uh, 45, 50-minute show. Uh, it's just all music, all performances done here in the studio. Um, I don't want to give away too much of the behind-the-scenes. I'll say that some of it has been pre-recorded. You know, just to uh, show you behind the curtain a little bit. And some of it's going to be done on the fly. And we have a really weird, fantastic way of uh, doing this that we've been working on for a little while. Uh, and just tune in Monday. Uh, and and you'll see exactly what's going to happen. Um, and I think you guys will really like it. Um, we are musicians uh, in this in this podcast it's it's made up largely of musicians and so that's what the whole big to do is uh we're going to start off the new approximate podcast year by giving y'all what we feel is the best of ourselves and then the normal talky podcasty shows will resume uh so i hope that answers your question uh cool breeze uh let me skip to the next uh, let's see here. Ba, ba, ba. I'm filling time with syllables, the first of which is ba, and then ba, and then ba. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Uh, okay, so we're going to skip on. Uh, Eric Sp Erica Spangler asks, Hi, Jamie. Uh, Erica, uh, quotation marks, bad example tranny, Spangler here. I, I'm not quite sure what you're referencing there, but I'm sure it's something that has to do with some asshole thing that I said in a previous episode. Um, I have enclosed a photo of my trans pride tattoo to show what trans pride means to me. Uh, since it's Pride Month, I thought I would ask. Uh, it's just the very tail end of Pride Month at this point, as far as I know. Um, we're probably catching it on the last day. Uh but since it's Pride Month, I thought I would ask, uh, and for some reasons this is in quotations, which shouldn't be, um, not to fuck with you, but weird. Uh, what are your thoughts on trans pride, and what does it mean to you personally? Keep on rocking in the free world. Sigh. Um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, what does trans pride mean to me? Fucking nothing. Goddamn nothing. Um, I don't, I, I only allow myself to, if I'm going to take pride in anything at all, it's only going to be for personal accomplishments. And that's, that's if I'm feeling, you know, if I really have my head up my ass and I allow myself to feel any kind of pride whatsoever, I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying that pride is a sin or anything like that. It's just, we're all constantly growing and we're all constantly striving to be better. And I think it's, uh, I think a person would be a little remiss to take too much pride in any of their accomplishments. And that's just as an individual, let alone take pride for a, 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 a kind of weird, um, uh, ambiguous, kind of anomalous group that you are simply lumped into, I guess, just because you decide, like, uh, let me find a better way to explain this. So I'm a trans person, right? Do I need to identify with trans people as a tribe in order to feel validated or in order to I don't know I don't know I don't like tribalism so I don't join groups I, I think fucking it's I think it's a toxic way to be even when the intentions are the best I can't align myself with a group because what I'm doing at that point is I'm aligning myself with an overall theme that sounds great on the surface but is a group that's made up of individuals, and individuals could be shitty. And if I'm in that group, then I am expected to, like, say that that shitty person in the group is okay. It, we're just all under the same umbrella, even though this one may be a shitty person. I don't want to do that. It's too much to think about. It's too much fucking weight, and it doesn't matter. And there's nothing about being a trans person or being in the trans community that has ever fucking affected my life. I, 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 I'm fucking, I got my own irons in the fire. And, and it's hard enough just being a person without having to align yourself with a goddamn tribe. Uh, so, no, I don't, I don't think about trans pride. I try not to think about my own personal pride. So, yeah, fuck. Fuck that. Um, I mean, hey, you know, if if not everybody thinks the way that I do, not everybody's built the way that I am. And if you need to lean against another person's shoulders or a group of people's shoulders in order to feel uh, whole, well, then do that. Fine, do that. I'm not one of those types. Um, I, I, I am busy enough as it is and I'll take my lumps personally and I will I will prove myself as an individual personally uh, so I don't I don't give a shit about trans pride or gay pride or fucking uh, Nazi pride or any kind of pride no groups don't give a shit um, so I hope that answers your question I hope I don't sound like too much of an asshole I know I have a way of putting things but uh, I always have your best intentions in mind, um, so trust in that. But we're going to work one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I'm not going to join a group to prove that. Um, so I think that was all from Erica Spangler. Let me double-check. Yep. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, this is from Jessica Hawk. Jessica Hawk says... Um, I haven't pre-read these, so uh, we're just going to go off the uh, seat of a pants here. Um, so you told me to contact you. I was in the chat on Ask a Tranny episode 8, and I asked about making money as a young trans lady. Uh, I've always thought about porn, even since my early days of transition, and I've been thinking of doing escort work with a friend, where I am now. now I know it's not the smartest career path, but I really don't have any traditionally marketable skills like carpentry or that kind of shit. Uh, I do know uh, how to suck and fuck. Oh, jeez. Okay, I do know how to suck and fuck, so I don't know. Uh, it's kind of just thoughts in my head right now. 
Now there's another email here. Let me see how that relates before I answer that question. Uh, also, how do you keep your dick working? Mine is on and off, and it could be pretty annoying when I need to relieve some stress, you know? Okay, so let's answer the uh, actually the uh, important question. Uh, I don't know. How old are you? That's that's a good thing to know. If you're in your, uh, what, you, I imagine probably your 20s, early to mid-20s, and you have no viable skills, and, I mean, there's, there's, your question raises a lot of questions that all need answered in order to answer your initial question. Um, do you have any dreams? Do you have any ambitions? Uh, do you have any talents? I mean, just because you don't have any viable skills that are uh, proper for the workplace, that doesn't mean you're not talented. Can you draw? Can you write a song? Uh, are you good at uh, fucking with clay? You know, do you, um, are you the best at uh, combing your cat's hair? <laughs> you know, <laughs> do, are you good at anything? It may not, I mean, it doesn't mean it has to be commercially viable, but do you got a passion? Do you got a, a dream? That's a that's something that I'd want to know before I can give you a definitive answer. Um, let's say you don't. Let's say you're just a lump. You never asked to be born, and you were shat out into this world, and, uh, and the cards weren't in your favor. So now your only option is to rely on a base set of human skills that everybody has. Sock and fuck. We are all built to do that in the same way we're all built to eat, breathe, and shit. Uh, so you have to rely on your base skills in order to make money. Well, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. I am proof of that. Um, but I got to ask you this. Uh, are you prone to getting into trouble? You know, uh, what are your decision-making skills like? Uh, I can understand being at the end of your ropes and not having anywhere to turn and and relying on base skills like fucking and sucking to, you know, turn a buck. You know, you swing around a brass pole. You, you know, you work in the sex industry. I get that. I get that. But it is this the result of you making bad decisions or truly not having any other options or are you just lazy that's the whole reason i do sex work it's not i'm i'm smart i'm capable i get things done i don't like the work <laughs> uh yeah no i'm a fucking dirtbag and so i i use those i use the fucking suck model of uh you know paying rent on time which is never ever paid on time uh to circumvent uh, being a nine to five worker bee uh, cause that's hell to me. I, I, I did it for 10 years from the time I was 16 to the age of about 25, 26. And, uh, when I did trip over the opportunity to find another path in life, I immediately took it. Um, and that was, you know, uh, finding space in the sex industry. Um, and I've made a pretty decent name for myself, uh, I haven't had to really answer to anyone. I am my own boss, and it's amazing. But I was only able to get away with doing it uh, because I'm no dummy. And I'm the kind of person that does tend to keep themselves out of trouble. I'm not a chaotic person. Now, I have my faults. And, yeah, I, I get in a little, like I said, I'm on probation for a non-moving violation from my car, I, I had an expired fucking license. Again, lazy, <laughs> but I'm not a, a violent or erratic person that constantly, I don't do drugs, I don't, you know, I need to know more about you. Are you into drugs? You know, are you, are you prone to violence? Uh, do you have a history of uh, sexual abuse? You know, maybe you're, maybe you are talented. Maybe you do have viable skills, but you're simply acting out out of uh, an emotional quandary in the back of your head that you are too young to have figured out. So there's a lot of kinds of questions that I need answered in order for me to answer you. Now, keep writing me and uh, keep asking me uh, questions and giving me more details, and we'll get you squared away. But I'm gonna need some more information. 
So I'm sorry that I didn't immediately get to the the answer that you want to hear, but uh, but we'll get there. Just keep talking to me. We'll get there. Um, and then as for your uh, your add-on question, how uh, let's see, how do you keep your dick working? Mine is on and off, and it can be pretty annoying uh, when I need to relieve some stress, you know? Well, all kinds of folks is different, and I've never had a problem working. The only, the only problem I've ever had with maintaining any kind of uh, erection as a trans person, I don't know, uh, hormone therapy for, oh, geez, nigh on six years now, and it's never fucked with me the way that it seems to fuck with other people. Um, but I find there's two camps. If you're a trans person and you have a hard time with your uh, with your junk as far as maintaining an erection, uh, there's folks like me that it's just not an issue. Uh, I have a very strong libido. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I can do sex work and it just doesn't affect me in any kind of ethical or moral way. I, I, I never feel dark or weird about it. It's just... Uh, I do this as easy as I would fucking uh, flipping burgers, you know. But that's largely due to the fact that my libido is strong, healthy, and I'm uh, an emotionally intelligent person. I know how to um, compartmentalize, and uh, I know the difference. I, I, I don't have a bunch of gray areas that make me... This is why I'm not a fucking... Even though sometimes I look the part in... Uh, uh, photos that you've seen i'm not an emo kid or a goth kid i got shit figured out and i know how to make shit work um but so it doesn't affect me my libido is too strong but i know it does absolutely affect other people people that have the same kind of problem that you're describing and it it seems to be 50 50 and the people that do have a hard time keeping it up, the trans individuals that I know, um, it's usually for one of two reasons. One, they're taking in too many chemicals, they're overcompensating, they're taking too much hormones, um, maybe they don't have a, a regimen and they're just trying to skip ahead and try to thin themselves out as much as humanly possible, and it completely fucks with their uh, physiology. And yeah, and their dick don't work. Not when they want it to. Uh, it's because they're going overboard. And that's a sign of, um, well, that's a sign of psychological problems. These people need help in a way that chemicals can't fix. Um, and then there's the other folks. People that just simply aren't as sexual as maybe they'd like to believe. Um, and so their dick just doesn't, it would never would have naturally worked. I mean, to ask, uh, it, Viagra exists for a reason. Um, F Pfizer has the fucking lockdown on that <laughs> chunk of profit for a reason. It's because just even regular dudes have a hard time making their dick work, let alone trans individuals. That's just, uh, you know, a toss of the dice and, and you came up with the fucking... You came up with a bad total, you know, that's, that's nature, just, you, you got the short end of the stick on that one, and it could very easily be that, um, all I can, all I can say is maybe if it's that important to you, maybe invest in a, a little Viagra, you can buy this shit online without a doctor's note, you know, just type it in, Google around, you'll find it, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I keep a, I keep a little stash of uh, boner remedy, uh, you know, off to the side for productions just in case somebody comes into my house, a model, that may happen to need it. I never need it. So I, I don't know what else to tell you except investigate yourself, uh, find out. I mean, you know, you heard my whole spiel. Uh, see if that, what I said, raises any red flags. And... um Otherwise, I don't know, buy, buy a Cialis, buy some Viagra, uh, buy uh, the uh, generic um, Cialis, which is uh, Camegra. It comes in a nice uh, gel form that's flavored like pineapple and banana and shit. And you take that down, shit fucking works in about an hour. 
and, you know, enjoy your boner for two to three hours. Uh, other than that, can't really help you out. Um, <laughs> that's, that's really all I have to say about that. I think that marks the end of our, um, our email questions. Uh, I will go to the burner line and see if we have anything there. I think we have one or two things. Uh, now, no name was given, and I don't want to give phone numbers out on the air. Uh, but I have somebody who says, uh, when can I take you on a date? And then another text that says, simply, it's just, it's just a question mark. Uh, well, the answer to that is, uh, goddamn never. Never, ever, ever. Never. This is, this is, this is no game. This is what no game looks like. You don't just, you don't just cold call a fucking date (laughs) to a stranger (laughs) who you've never met. That's how you don't get a date. Uh, so, uh, hopefully lesson learned, uh, to anybody who might be watching any, uh, chasers or, um, I know you guys hate that term. That's why I use it. Uh, or just any kind of, maybe you're a newbie. Uh, maybe you want to know how to ask a trans person out. Well, it's not like that. You don't do that. Uh, you, it has to be organic. Your meeting of a person, any human, trans or not, has to be completely organic. You can't just, you don't just call, cold call someone and say, hey, when can I date you? Well, fuck you. Who the fuck are you? I'm a busy person. I got a fucking full life. I'm almost 40 years old. He, uh, who the fuck are you? Shut the fuck up. Go away. You're, you're wasting my time. I don't know you. And even if I was crazy enough to say, yes, I'll go out on a date with you. Well, where the fuck are you even from? You're like, I'm on the, I could be on the other side of the world. None of it makes sense. It's stupid and it's toxic and you just don't. Any girls out there that get uh, accosted by boys with these fucking cold calls or sliding into DMs or whatever fucking shit kids say these days, uh, block, delete, ignore, fuck them off. There's a whole real world out there that you're going to experience, and uh, that's where you'll meet whatever kind of significant other you're going to run into. Uh, don't just block and delete. Uh, so, yeah, dude, never. you never going to date me. That's a stupid thing. You did a stupid thing. So, um, uh, I think that was it. There was no other uh, things on the burner line. So, here's the point of the show where I start to take questions uh, from the chat room. So if you guys have any questions, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Uh, I'm going to take a swig of beer, uh, relight my smoke, and if there's nothing doing, then we're going to play this motherfucker out and end the show. So uh, your time to ask a question starts now. Looking at the watch that I don't own, Okay, so uh, we're going to count to, oh, I don't know. I should give it a few. Nobody, it, unless my chat room's broken and I'm, it's simply not refreshing, I'm not seeing anything. The last thing that I see is, uh, oh, hey, Brett. Okay, we, hey, Brett saved it. We do have a question. What happened to the dog? Uh, well, here's what happened to the dog, Brett Wendell. Uh, the dog belonged to uh, Ada Black, and Ada Black moved away. Uh, she dropped out of the business and is uh, trying to uh, find a healthier way to live. The business did not suit her, and uh, she needed to go be somewhere where she could uh, work on herself as a person, and the dog went along with her. Um, now I still keep in contact with Ada and I can tell you that the dog is doing amazingly. The dog is fine. Um, but we did lose our mascot (laughs) for a little bit. We kind of, uh, okay. So there's a little bit of news. Uh, the mascot has been replaced by another mascot. Just got a new kitty cat. And, um, for those of you that pay attention to my Twitter feed, uh, yeah, 
I found a cat out in the fucking parking lot of my apartment complex, and um, and her name is Corn Dog, and she's probably about oh maybe a little less than a year old, uh, and she's fucking feisty and loves people, and is the opposite of a kind of a cold-hearted, cold-blooded, what people seem to think of as uh, cat-like behavior. She's an awesome little dude, and uh, and she's sleeping right now. I'm looking right at her. So I, I don't want to wake her up and pull her onto the podcast, but uh, search my Twitter feed and you can see you can see pictures of Corn Dog and she's the new official mascot of the show. Um, so what else? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. John Don, the uh, mascot turned into a cat from a dog to a cat. Um, and I'm not seeing any more questions, and I have a bunch of shit to do. Uh, later tonight, so I'm going to go ahead, uh, I'll give you two seconds to post anything else. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, and I'm going to go ahead and play the show out. All right, here we go. Ask a tranny. Ask a tranny. And you, y- y'all did, y- y'all did that, and you ask a tranny. So, good night, folks. That's your shitty ending song. All right, we'll see you next week on Ask a Tranny. Uh, send in your questions, and uh, yeah, later. <laughs>